Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. So today I will be speaking about uh, 1325 work and uh, the topic of my presentation is pushing forward the uh, resolution 1325 agenda in Armenia. I will be presenting very shortly the first civil society monitoring report that we undertook uh, last year, and I will talk about further actions for the adoption of the national election plan in Armenia. So far, um, well, this is uh, an obvious fact. Uh, little has been done by our government to implement the resolution 1325 in Armenia. And if we look at any important pillar of the resolution and project it into Armenian reality, we will see huge gaps in all existing aspects. Women are deprived of chance to have their contribution in negotiations and they do not play an official role in conflict resolution and reconciliation processes. Well, sexual and gender-based violence is very high in Armenia as well as in the South Caucasus in general. Uh, but in our country, preventive and protective mechanisms are not put in place. Taking into account all this, the implementation of the Resolution 1325 is a must, but our government does not take uh, any major steps toward the realization of the resolution. The manifestation of this can be the fact that there is no political will even to uh, develop a national action plan. For, uh, bringing this for uh, bridging this gap, um, together with some other organizations, uh, we established a group which is called Armenian Monitoring Group on UN Security Council Resolution 1325. How it happened? Uh, in 2013, a number of women's and peace organizations received an advocacy training from Operation 1325 group. I'm sure that uh, many of you know this group. Uh, and uh, this group is specialized in giving skills to civil society groups to undertake 1325 advocacy in their respective countries. As a result of the training, uh, we have developed a group, and in 2013, uh, the members of this uh, group were Boris Women's Development Resource Center Foundation, Society Without Violence, Democracy Today, Women's Resource Center, Peace Dialogue, and Women's Rights Center. What is very important to notice is that the group is growing now, and we have new members. This year, Pink Armenia and Women's Support Center joined the group. Um, at the same time, we have some individual members within the group as well that do not represent any particular organization. So the group has developed the first ever monitoring report on 1325 implementation in Armenia, and the results bring forward the necessity of advocacy and actions for the implementation of the resolution at the local, national, um, and international levels, with a more particular goal of having a network. In a situation where, where there is no interest and political will to implement the resolution, uh, um, the um, development and uh, uh, adoption of an app um, will be an important step, but before that we need to do some stuff, and we think that the development of the monitoring report can be very helpful in this regard. Uh, uh, since we don't have much time, I will be just giving some um, key um, findings of this report. And first of all, I will start with the structure of the report because I believe that for some of you it will be very useful because maybe you will uh, have a willingness to come up with your own monitoring report in cooperation uh, with the Global Network of Women Peace Builders, which is based organization and our organization is the this um, so um, the report is composed of three main pillars uh, the first one is women peace and security program and here we are addressing the nature of the conflict the impact of conflict of women and relevant legal and policy framework the second important pillar that I will be focusing more on is data presentation and analysis. And here there are four important keys 
participation, prevention and protection, and promotion of gender perspective. And finally, the third important pillar is vision and recommendations, and I will also speak about this. So as I present it, uh, um, I will be more focusing on the second and third pillars. And uh, it's important to notice that in order to uh, come up with the monitoring report, uh, we used the indicators proposed by the Global Network of Women Peace Builders. So the first indicator that you can see on the screen is the index of women's participation in governance. And here we analyze um, women in uh, political life. So, due to lack of representation in decision-making positions, women in Armenia have very little influence over policy decisions. Gender equality has not been a priority for the country, and most uh, women-oriented policies focus on reproductive and maternal health, but never civil or Women's participation in politics and governance um, such as uh, national assemblies, uh, regional and local municipalities, judiciary, etc., is very low in Armenia. Although uh, more than 52% of population in Armenia are women, the number of women of seats in parliament and in decision-making uh, is relatively low. Uh, here I want to mention that um, uh, the 2012 parliamentary elections of Armenia took place after some amendments in the electoral code, uh, as a result of which the gender for them was increased from 15% to 20%. But unfortunately, this did not have any uh, major uh, positive implications on the number of the parliament, and it changed only uh, through one uh, percent, more or less, which is very low. And we made the estimation if um, the current dynamics continue, uh, we will need at least 25 years for achieving the 20% quota, so uh, quite a long time. Um, I'm sure that you will uh, have some hard copies of our report, and uh, in hard copies you can find uh, some data that I will not present now to you because of the uh, time limitation, but maybe this will be very um, interesting for you so you can look at the hard copies of the report. Uh, the second indicator is about percentage of women in peace negotiating teams and detailed breakdown of gender issues addressed in peace agreements. And here, obviously, women are not part of formal negotiations. They are not represented in OSC means group, and so far all peace and reconciliation efforts where women have contributions stay on civil society and non-formal settings. The third indicator is about index of women participation in the justice, security sector, and peacekeeping missions. And here uh, we analyze the security sector, more particularly the Ministry of Defense, the police service, the armed forces, and the justice sector. Um, generally, uh, there is one uh, trend in all of these sectors, is that whenever we go to the high positions where uh, decision-making processes are taking place, usually there are no women there. Well, this is obvious, and this is happening in all of our countries. But whenever we go to the operational level, there are some women, especially in the justice sector. Uh, I want to highlight a new uh, phenomenon in Armenia concerning the armed forces. Till 2013, in four training institutes of the armed forces, only men were allowed to die and to get this uh, training. Uh, but now uh, women are also, uh, women also have access to those institutions. And what is more important to notice is that in 2014, this year, there were more um, women in these institutions rather than men. Well, of course, this has um, some reasons behind. 
But at least this is a phenomenon that we have to highlight and take into consideration in our further research. The second uh, big uh, block of our research is about prevention and protection. And here we talked about um, gender-based and sexual violence, as well as sex selective abortions, is a, a huge problem in our region, and especially in Armenia. Um, the indicator uh, six is about number and percentage of sexual and gender-based violence cases reported, investigated, prosecuted, and penalized. And here I want to mention that unfortunately we do not have any research that would somehow show the negative uh, uh, um, <laughs> impact of the conflict of um, the rise of domestic violence in Armenia. Unfortunately, we do not have any data, any research on this. Um, but some, some individual cases are proving that of domestic violence uh, in Armenia because it says that the left uh, the poor with serious physical and psychological problems and because uh, they were not 